our education uh, systems in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We did not develop them because uh, uh, the, the public school system was godless and the universities were anti-Christian. In the late 19th century, most public schools and most colleges continued to have a highly Christian-oriented uh, uh, curriculum and mindset. They still taught the Bible. Many teachers in, in the public school system were, were uh, Christians and outright teaching Christianity. Of course, there were some challenges developing with spiritualism and other things happening at the same time that was part of the reform movement. We developed a system and a, a, uh, a love of education because we felt we had to pass on the values and morals and beliefs that were peculiar to the Seventh-day Adventist message. And that was the priority. That was what we did. That we wanted to maintain high levels of, of, of academics and high levels of, of other opportunities that are core to our, our, our being and our holistic desire to develop the mind, body, and the soul. But uh, it was to pass on our faith. Not just to save kids from atheism and, 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 and keep kids uh, away from, again, what we often associate with the challenges of our, our other schools that are around us, but because we felt that the eternal destiny of our kids was of the greatest important, priority and importance. In the very first book of the Bible ever written, uh, likely, probably, the book of Job, uh, he dedicates an entire chapter to uh, the idea of where we go to find education and knowledge and truth and wisdom. And I would submit to you that the words that were scratched out on parchment 3,500 years ago that were true then are just as true today as they were back then. This is Job 28. I'm not reading the whole chapter, just some selections of it, beginning in verse 12. Where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep says it's not with me. The sea says it is not in me. Pure gold cannot be given in exchange for it, nor can the silver be weighed at its price. It's, it cannot be valued as the gold of Ophir, its precious onyx or sapphire. Gold or glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for articles of fine gold. Coral and crystal are not to be mentioned, and the acquisition of wisdom is far above that of pearls. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can the value of it be found in pure gold. Where then does wisdom come from, and where is the place of understanding? Thus it is hidden from the eyes of all the living, concealed from the birds of the sky. Death and the grave say, with our ears we've heard report of it. But God understands its way, and he knows its place. He looks to the end of the earth, he sees everything under the heavens. When he imparted weight to the wind and meted out the waters to measure. When he set a limit for the rain and a course for the thunderbolt. Then he saw and declared it. He established it also. He searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Have you heard it before? The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. It says it in many places in Scripture. Here in Job it says it as well. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to, to, and to depart from evil is understanding. What is education if you remove the fear of God? What is left? What is its value if it is godless? What can it do for us if it is not in a context of the creator God who made everything in the first place? Here, in the passages and pages of scripture, it said it must be centered on a realization and a knowledge, first and foremost, of God. And so, we have set out in more ways than, than most to establish a priority for education. Every time you pay your tithe, you are supporting Christian education. Every time you pay a local offering in virtually, I, I, I wish I could say this in every case, but in virtually every case, the local church is supporting Christian education to some way, in some way from its budget. It is part of our very identity as Seventh-day Adventists that we should embrace education, the development of the mind. In her book, Education, just one paragraph, Ellen White says, Every human being created in the image of God is empowered with power akin to that of the Creator. Individuality, power to think 
and to do. The men in whom this power is developed are those who bear responsibilities, who are leaders in enterprise, and who influence character. You heard of influencers? You know, all these influencers. Long before that term was coined, long before that became uh, a, a phrase, here, the servant of the Lord wrote it as well. We can be those who influence character. It is the work of true education to develop this power, to train the youth to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other men's thoughts. I know you've heard it before, but every time I contemplate that statement, every time I, I read that, I think of the challenges of our generation today who is so overwrought with being exposed to and overwhelmed with all these messages coming that are not always processed through social media and through other media and through entertainment. Are we really still devoted to the idea that we are to be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other people's thoughts? Instead of combining their study to that which men have said or written, let students be directed to the sources of truth, to the vast fields open for research in nature and revelation. Let them contemplate the great facts of duty and destiny, and the mind will expand and strengthen. Instead of educated weaklings, institutions of learning may send forth men and women strong to think and to act, men who are masters and are not slaves of circumstances. I circled that. <laughs> Slaves of circumstances. When you think of so many of the problems that young people have today, I think it's because they've given in uh, to the circumstances of that time and have not really developed the skills to think and to act as God would direct. Individuals who would possess breadth of mind, clearness of thought, and the courage of their convictions. Now more than ever, now more than ever, we value our education. Now more than ever, we need to remind ourselves to call each of us individually to a higher standard. Like I said, not just for our academy kids, or elementary kids, but to every Seventh-day Adventist believer. Are you devoted to expanding your minds? Are you devoted to the reality of making sure that God is at the center of everything that you know and that you are using this great power that God has given you, the power to think and to do? That is what makes Seventh-day Adventist education different and so important. So I hope that you will love your education and love supporting those who are in our institutions. I want to invite our final group to come up as uh, our postlude. Now, I would encourage you to go ahead and listen to the music uh, as they end and wait uh, wait till the end until after they're done because I think you're really going to enjoy. It's not uh, Gospel of John. It's, what a friend I found. What a friend I found. Um, as they come up, though, I would like to say, we close the prayer. Come on up um, as I pray. Father God, thank you that we can just devote these, these moments today to hearing the blessings of music and to see the talents and to see the coordination and gifts that you have given to our students. Thank you that we can be a, 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 a world church, Lord, even though... Uh, they have traveled from another city and another state. Uh, we have a common faith that binds us together and makes us family. Uh, Lord, as we enter into these chaotic times and as they continue to develop, Lord, help us not to give up on developing our minds and supporting education, Lord. Be with us and remind us every day that it is the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning. We pray this in Jesus' name.